Over the last 20 years or so, performance luxury cars have gone from sort of crazy to definitely insane. About 20 years ago, 300 horsepower in a high performance luxury sedan would have been something to talk about, but now you can get this Mercedes-Benz C-Class with over 500 horsepower. That meant that there was a pretty big delta between the base C-Class in terms of performance and that top-end C63 AMG. Mercedes decided to fill that gap with an all-new C43 a number of years ago, and that's the model we're taking a look at today. Some folks have derided the C43 as not being a true AMG model because this engine is not hand-built in the same way that the C63's engine is built, and we don't have all the same sort of special treatments to the body and the chassis, etc., that we see in that more expensive AMG model. But it does give shoppers the ability to get an AMG at a lower price tag, and I think this is my favorite version of the C-Class because the power level at 385 horsepower is just about right. The basics of this generation C-Class date back to 2014, where it came out as a 2015 model. For the 2019 model year, Mercedes has given us a pretty significant refresh. We get a new front-end look that changes depending on the model that you're driving, whether we're driving the uh, regular C300, the C43 right here, or the C63, which gets a much more vertical themed grille right there. We have full LED headlamps out here on each side, and then the rear end gets a tweak as well. But the bones of the C-Class remain about the same. That means that if you liked the overall size of the C-Class before, you're gonna like this model right here, but if you thought the C-Class was a little too small, especially on the inside, then this is not gonna change your mind. At 184.5 inches long, the C-Class is sort of in the middle of the compact luxury segment. This is almost exactly the same size as the new Genesis G70 and the Tesla Model 3. But this is about five inches shorter than an Infiniti Q50 and about three inches shorter than the new Volvo S60. So if you're looking for an entry in this segment that has especially more rear legroom, then you're gonna find that in some of those larger alternatives rather than the C-Class right here. But we have about the same kind of interior room that we find in that new Genesis G70 model. You can see from the side profile that Mercedes is still prioritizing rear seat headroom in the C-Class. That's something that we've long seen from Mercedes and their sedan models, and that gives us this more classic proportion on the side. That's definitely something that I prefer because of that practicality for the rear seat passengers. Out back, the AMG light theme continues, so we find some changes versus the C300, but not as many changes as we see in the C63. We have quad exhaust tips down at the bottom, some air diffuser components right there at the bottom of the bumper, a carbon fiber spoiler right here on the trunk lid, and then standard LED tail lamp modules. These turn signals are red in America, not amber like we see in Europe. Completing the AMG transformation, we have unique wheels and tires, upgraded brakes, and a bi-turbo 4 badge right there on the front fender, because all-wheel drive is standard on the C43. Generally speaking, a lack of sheet metal changes are one of the things that differentiate the C43 and the BMW M340i from the M3 and the C63, the next tier up in terms of performance. But we still have a staggered tire setup, long a hallmark of performance vehicles, so 225 width up front, 255 width back here. Some folks may not realize this, but Mercedes has long been an innovator when it comes to safety technologies, from active safety to passive safety systems, gadgets and gizmos that are launched first on Mercedes models. But for some reason in the luxury segment, it's not that common to find all of those active safety technologies standard on every trim. For instance, the C43 does not come standard with blind spot monitoring or adaptive cruise control. On the other hand, Mercedes does give us forward collision warning with autonomous braking, pedestrian detection, and the Mercedes telematic system standard. But if you want some of those other active safety systems, then you will have to pay for those extra. The C-Class comes with three different engines and four different power levels in the US. Things start out for the C300 with a two liter four cylinder engine. It produces 255 horsepower and 273 pound feet of torque. We then have this model right here, which uses a three liter twin turbo V6 produces 385 horsepower and 384 pound-feet of torque. The C63 gives us a 4-liter twin-turbo V8, producing either 469 horsepower or 503 horsepower, depending on the trim level you get. All three engines are mated exclusively to a 9-speed automatic transmission, and all three of those 9-speeds share the same basic design. Some of you may be surprised by that because the C63 advertises itself as having an MCT, or multi-clutch transmission. Technically, all automatic transmissions in America are multi-clutch transmissions because all automatics have multiple clutch elements in them. The key difference between the C43 and the C63 is the C63's transmission does not have a torque converter, and this model does. That means that in general terms, the C43 is going to be smoother out on the road, especially in stop-and-go and, and slow-and-go traffic than the C63, 
but the engine and transmission connection is not going to be quite as direct as we find in the C63. So C63 is going to feel a little bit more like a dual clutch transmission or a robotic manual transmission than this one, but the transmission's basic design is the same. Front seat comfort comes in at 9 out of 10 points. We do have sport seats in the C43, but as far as Mercedes sport seats go, these are definitely more comfortable than the last C AMG that we reviewed here at Alex and Autos, which was the previous generation model. The problem I had with that one was the shoulder area in the seat was very constrictive, and we don't see that in this generation. We still have very aggressive side bolsters, but they've freed up the shoulder area, making it easier for larger drivers to find a good driving position. We also have pretty aggressive seat bottom cushion bolsters, so keep in mind if you're a larger person, you may not fit that comfortably in the AMG model. We have a four-way adjustable lumbar support and a power extending thigh cushion, but the headrest is fixed into place. We also have a powered tilt telescopic steering column with a decent range of motion, and the passenger seat has the same range of motion as the driver's. Hopping into the back seat, we find less legroom than we see in some of the larger entries in this segment, like the Infiniti Q50 or the Volvo S60. But we also find less room back here than in something like a Tesla Model 3. And that is a little surprising, since the Model 3 is about the same size overall as the C43. Much of that has to do with the relative efficiency that we see in the Model 3. We get a shorter hood because we don't need an engine up there, and then we get a slightly tidier back end as well, and that results in more legroom inside the cabin and more headroom as well. If I lean back in this seat, my head is brushing the ceiling, and if I move to the middle seat position, then my head is touching the ceiling. I would have to crane my head to one side in order to sit back there. Continuing all the way over to the right, I can barely fit my feet back there in the footwells, and then my knees are definitely touching that rear seat back. In this position, the front seat back is all the way back in its tracks. I had a six foot five person sitting very comfortably up front, but that means an awful lot less room behind them. With 12.6 cubic feet of storage space, the C43's trunk is on the small side for the compact luxury segment. And that's why we were able to squeeze one fewer 24 inch roller bag back here than most of the entries in this group. Just three would fit back here. Lifting up the cargo load floor, we find a little bit of additional storage space. We also have a place where you can store your cargo divider right there, but we don't find a spare tire back here. Instead of a spare tire, Mercedes does what many European companies do in their high performance models. They give us run flat tires all the way around. That reduces the ride quality a little bit because we have a much stiffer sidewall in the tire, but it does permit you to run for about 50 miles if you get a flat tire. Taking a quick look around the interior, we have a pretty standard sized moonroof right there over the driver and front passenger's heads. Height adjustable shoulder belts for the driver and front passenger and fixed headrests in this AMG sport seat design. This seat has the appearance of a five-point harness capable seat, but Mercedes tells us that it is not designed for that from the factory. So if you do want to put a five-point harness in your C43, you're going to have to buy new seats. The upholstery is a combination of leather and then Alcantara inserts right there in the center. And then we have a lot of red accents on the interior. The red accents are definitely something that you'll notice of a difference between this and something like a Model 3 performance. Because the interior in the Model 3 doesn't change when you get the higher performance versions. But here in the C-Class, we definitely get some touches that help you know that you're driving the more performance oriented version. The front doors are made from all soft touch materials except for that metal trim going on right there by the seat controls and the speaker grill. You can also see that we have that ambient light strip right there under the metal trim. The front passenger seat has the same range of motion as the driver's seat. We have a three position seat memory right there and then controls for the seat heating and then optionally if you got that option seat ventilation would be right in front of it. The interior has been refreshed for 2019 but the overall design does seem a little bit older than something like the new Mercedes-Benz E-Class and of course certain versions of the S-Class as well. On the passenger side we have a glove compartment with kind of an unusual shape there. It doesn't open very wide so it is a little bit more difficult than some of the glove box designs to get stuff in and out there. We then have stitched sections of the upper part of the dashboard soft touch injection molded plastics lower. And then in the center of the dashboard, we have a design theme that definitely looks like the new CLS and the E-Class as well. Mercedes did not give the C-Class their latest infotainment software. So that means this is still running the Mercedes command operating system rather than their newest generation of infotainment system. This is not a touchscreen LCD in the dashboard, so it is a little bit more difficult to interact with things like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but the rest of the system is definitely designed for the control wheel that we've seen in Mercedes products for a while. Below the infotainment screen, we find three large air vents, very similar to what we see in the Mercedes-Benz E-Class, the standard bank of Mercedes climate controls. These are all toggles, so we toggle up and down for temperature. This menu button takes us to the climate control menu inside the command infotainment system. We then have some direct access buttons for that command system, navigation, radio, media, telephone, car systems, etc., and then an analog clock. 
Mercedes locates the cup holders behind door number one. This is also where we find a 12 volt charge port and an ashtray right there. And then a very small storage area where you can put some small smartphones, although they will be covering one of these cup holders if you do. Behind the cup holders, we have the controls for the infotainment system. We have a click wheel and a touch pad. We've seen this in Mercedes products for a while. Back button and home button right there also duplicated right over here on the touchpad. And then we have a track forward button right there in the middle of the touchpad. You can use the scroll wheel or the touchpad to interact with the system or the control wheel on the steering wheel itself. On the right side, we have the power and volume toggle, a button to make the exhaust louder, enable and disable the start stop system, and then activate the 360 degree camera system. As we see in a number of other Mercedes, the armrest opens right there in the middle like that. This is where we find the USB inputs for the infotainment system and a small storage area. On the driver's side, we have a full color LCD instrument cluster, but it's not displayed in the same way as we see in other Mercedes with the two large LCDs in the dash. This is within a binnacle, more like we find a traditional instrument cluster. The display is just about as configurable as other Mercedes models. There are a few different views. We have the super sport view with a large tachometer in the middle, a sport view that's a little bit more classically designed, and then the Mercedes classic look that maintains Mercedes classic colors. In any of these designs, you can choose what is being displayed on each side. So for instance, if we want the trip computer over there on the left, we can do that. And then I can toggle over to the right and choose what's displayed on the right hand side. Moving out from there, we have a flat bottom steering wheel with a split bottom spoke, aggressive sport grips up top and a little red indicator to let you know where the steering wheel is pointed in case you ever get lost. We have large paddle shifters on the back, down on the left and up on the right. They're very easy to see right there over those spokes. And then like other modern Mercedes models, we find these new little touch controls on each side of the steering wheel. The one on the left controls that multifunction LCD instrument cluster. The one on the right controls the infotainment system in the center of the dashboard. They work like the little trackballs on older Blackberry phones. You can scroll up, down, side to side, and then click to enter. On the right side, we find the controls for the infotainment system, volume up, down, phone hangup, pickup, voice command, and then a favorite button. And then on the right, we find the controls for the radar adaptive cruise control. But you'll notice that on the steering wheel, we do not have track up and down. That's done just with the infotainment system or that one track forward option on the touch pad in the center console. Out on the road, the first thing you'll notice is the acceleration. Even though this is sort of baby's first AMG, it is certainly fast. Zero to 60 happened in four seconds even. I'm suspecting that that's probably going to be about the same 0 to 60 time as the new M340i. To put that 4 second 0 to 60 time in perspective, 10 years ago a C63 AMG went 0 to 60 in 4.3 seconds. So this is faster than the top end C class AMG from just about 10 years ago. Part of the reason for that fast 0 to 60 time is this excellent 3 liter twin turbo V6, but you can also thank the 9 speed automatic transmission for that fast score. The Mercedes 9-speed has a very aggressive first gear ratio and that really helps improve initial acceleration. In terms of overall comparisons, this is relatively similar but a little bit faster than the Q50 Red Sport and it's not too far off of the G70 3.3 Turbo. But oddly enough, I don't think that the Red Sport 400 even is the right corollary to the C43 AMG because this has been AMG-ified and the Red Sport 400 really just feels like a faster Infiniti Q50. The same thing also goes for those higher performance versions of the Model 3. They feel just like the $35,000 base model. And the AMGification, if you will, of a car isn't just about going 0 to 60 faster. It's about braking and handling and looks and the styling of the seats, etc. It's the whole package deal. And we don't see that in all the competition, except really for BMW and the new M340i. In our braking tests, this model stopped from 60 miles an hour back to zero in 109 feet. That's an excellent stopping distance for this category. And thanks to the weight balance and the tire choice that Mercedes made, handling is absolutely excellent. I'm definitely going to give that an A plus in this model. If you want better handling than this, you'll have to look at that next category up again, the C63, the M3, the S4, etc. That is not where the C43 is playing, however, but again, Overall handling ability is surprisingly comparable to a C63 from 10 years ago. Get this car a little off the beaten path and you'll certainly start to notice the ride quality or some might say the lack thereof. Even though this is the entry level AMG in the C-Class lineup, this is still much firmer than the C300. So if you're looking for that classic, soft, comfortable Mercedes ride, that's the C300. If you're looking for something that is a lot firmer, that's where the AMGs lie, even if this vehicle is in its comfort mode, which it is now. Now, if I put it in Sport and Sport Plus, then oddly enough, out here on this rougher gravel road, I prefer the way that this mode feels. 
The reason for that is that it is still very firm, but we get a little bit less of the bounce that we see in the comfort mode. Remember that when we're talking about an adaptive suspension like this, this is not an adaptive air suspension, so it's not adjusting the effective spring rate. The spring rate remains constant. It's simply adjusting the damping. When it comes to my overall score, I'm going to go ahead and give this a C plus when it comes to the overall ride. I didn't find this quite as objectionable as some people found it. Maybe it's just the overall seat design or the exact way that this suspension is behaving on the roads that we've been driving on, but there are definitely some less comfortable suspensions out there. Something like the C63, that's definitely going to be less comfortable than the C43. Interestingly enough, back out on the paved road, I seem to prefer the comfort mode to the suspension rather than the sport mode, which is what I preferred on a rougher road surface. But out here on this paved road, you'll definitely hear the expansion joints coming into the cabin, those smaller bumps, you'll hear them and you'll really feel them as well. You can thank the run flat tires for that. If you want to improve the ride aftermarket, you could put non run flat tires on this, but then you'd need a tire fix a flat kit or a spare tire in the trunk. The tires and the suspension tune both play into the cabin noise a little bit here because we scored 72 decibels at 50 miles an hour, making this notably louder than some of the other luxury entries. You can again thank the tires and the suspension tune for that because there are two components to cabin noise. Tire noise, which is definitely on the high side, and wind noise, which is very, very well controlled. Tire noise isn't too much of a problem out here on the average road surface, but if your road surface is a little bit rougher and has a lot of bumps on it, you're definitely going to hear those in the cabin. When it comes to fuel economy, I'm going to go ahead and give this a B plus. Overall, we've been averaging about 20.2 miles per gallon, which is a little bit below the EPA score. Although keep in mind that this is an all wheel drive vehicle and it is an all wheel drive vehicle that can go zero to 60 in four seconds. So we've certainly been having a lot of fun with this vehicle and that is going to reduce the overall fuel economy. Overall, the C43 is a very impressive machine. We have acceleration, braking, and handling numbers that would have been absolutely class leading 10 years ago, and this is just the entry point for the AMG brand. I realize that the CLA45 is a little bit less expensive than this at the moment, but the CLA45 really is more of a full-on AMG model, just in a smaller wrapper, and the C43 is kind of a different animal. This is an entry point to the AMG brand rather than a full-on AMG product. The full-on C-Class AMG is the C63. The full-on AMG product for the CLA is the CLA45. And I have to say, I like this middle ground AMG model. It's a little bit less look at me than the C63, but we still have absolutely excellent performance numbers. And this doesn't feel like it's plotting to kill you when you go around a corner a little bit too fast. Not having that next level in astronomical horsepower figures, 500 horsepower and up, it means that this is going to be a little bit more controllable for the average driver, and I think just as much fun as I need. At the moment, the C300, which is the least expensive version of the C-Class, starts at $41,400. Opting for the C43 bumps that up to $55,250 for the base model. Now, there is a two-door version available as well that'll set you back a little bit more, $57,450. On the surface of things, that sounds pretty expensive, but looking at it a different way, the C43 performs better and handles better than a top-end AMG C-Class of just about 10 or 15 years ago. Another interesting thing here is that the C63, which is the big daddy AMG version of the C-Class, starts at $67,000. That's a pretty big jump over the C43, even though in terms of overall performance, the C43 is much closer to the C63 than the C300. So it's not like we have three equidistant models here. It's not like the C300 performance is here, C63 is here, and then the C43 meets them in the middle. Instead, the C43 and C63 are an awful lot closer together than you might think. Unquestionably, the C63 is going to be the better handling vehicle and it is going to be significantly faster, but you do give up a little bit of smoothness for that transition. The C43 is quite simply going to be more daily driver livable. Diving into the competition, let's take a look at Audi first. We have the Audi S4, which starts at $50,200. That is less expensive than the C43, but it has a little bit less standard equipment as well. And for some reason, to my eye, the S4 doesn't feel quite as premium, quite as separate from the rest of the lineup as the C43, not quite as special. Perhaps the reason for that is that in the Audi lineup, that next level in specialness is where RS comes in. But at the moment, there is no RS4. If you're lucky enough to live in Europe, then there's an RS4 wagon there, but there's still no RS4 sedan for some reason. 
As we see in most of the Audi vehicles on sale in America, all-wheel drive is standard in the S4, which is a nice touch and a little bit different than some of the competition out there. The engine is the same one that we found in the SQ5. I commented how slow the SQ5 was relative to some of the competition, but it is, seems to be quite different in the S4. In terms of overall 0-60 to 60 performance, the S4 seems to be right there around the 4.4 second mark. I haven't done a full review on the S4 yet, but I have had the opportunity to do a, a quick 0-60 to 60 test in a dealer-provided model came in right there at the claimed 4.4 seconds, so it is definitely in this same range as the C43. Moving along, we next have the BMW 3 Series. The M340i is the direct corollary to the C43, and like the C43, you can look at the M340i as sort of the entry-level M or the budget M, etc. But I have to say that the way that BMW has marked it definitely sets it a little bit apart from the M. In BMW speak, having three digits after the M rather than just one digit after the M means that the vehicle is part of the M performance line, not the full-on M brand. Meanwhile, C43 AMG I think flies a little bit more under the radar. It's probably a little bit more acceptable, unless of course you've paid the bucks for the C63. In terms of overall 0-60 to 60 performance, the BMW is definitely right there with the Mercedes, hitting 0-60 to 60 in the all-wheel drive form at 4.1 seconds. If you want a rear-wheel drive M340i, that is available. That's a big difference between the Mercedes and the BMW. Mercedes doesn't give you the option for rear-wheel drive, BMW does. As with the Mercedes lineup, there is, of course, the M3 and other versions above the M340i. So in terms of overall positioning, it's going to be very, very similar. Overall, I think the 3 Series is a slightly better value than the C43, but I think it's also a little bit plainer on the inside and on the outside. It has that BMW austerity to it, and it's a little bit less distinguishable from the rest of the 3 Series lineup, I think, than the C43 is. Now let's talk about competitors that are a little bit different. From Sweden, we have the Volvo S60 T8. At $54,400, it's definitely priced like the C43, and with a 0-60 to 60 time of 4.3 seconds, it also goes 0-60, to 60, about like the C43 and the M340i. But this Swede marches to a different drummer. Most of the power is going to the front wheels, and then we have the electric motor in the back because this is a plug-in hybrid. And that plug-in hybrid system is a pretty big difference. First up, we get a $7,500 tax credit. It's going to make the Volvo less expensive than the C43 or the S4 or the M340i. But it also means that we have the added weight of the plug-in hybrid battery pack. And that's going to mean that the S60 is just not going to handle like the S4 or the M340i or the CLA43. So 0-60 to 60 times are definitely there with the competition. Overall handling is definitely a step below. But the S60 excels in other ways, especially when it comes to interior refinement. I think the S60 has one of the best interiors in the segment. It compares incredibly well with the C43's interior. We also have a lot of room in the S60 because of the overall design of the S60, that front wheel drive design, and the way the plug-in hybrid system is packaged, we still have a large amount of interior room. And then there's the sideways benefit of being able to use the carpool lane in states like California and all the additional rebates that are available. That could drive the price of the S60 uh, down to about $10,000 less than something like the C43. So that's a pretty big deal. You could essentially get the S60 T8 for about $44,000 or so, or around the same price as a lightly equipped C300. I think for me, that price delta would be one big reason to look at something like the S60, but in another way of thinking, that also means that that pushes the S60 out of direct competition to something like the C43. Now, perhaps something like the upcoming Polestar 2 might be an interesting alternative to the C43 in terms of overall performance and overall handling ability, but we're going to have to wait to see what that looks like when it finally comes on the scene. Next up, we have the vehicle that has definitely upended the apple cart here in the luxury car segment, the Tesla Model 3. The Model 3 is solidly a C-Class and 3 Series competitor. It's just about the same size on the outside and about the same size on the inside. But the Model 3 has a little bit more headroom, and I think it's a little bit more comfortable than most of the alternatives here. Now, on the downside, the Model 3's interior doesn't really change. From the base $35,000 model all the way up to the most expensive trim of the Model 3, we get essentially the same interior. So on the C43, we get more sporty-oriented features. We get sportier seats. We get a sportier steering wheel, different trims, different badging, different stitching, all that sort of thing as you work your way on up from the C300 to the C43. And then we get even more changes when we move up into the C63. Same sort of thing going on with BMW. The M3 has body changes. There are actual body panels that are different on that model versus the other trims. And we don't see that on the Model 3. 
Essentially, they change tires, wheels, brakes, and then electric motors. That's pretty much it. To make your Model 3 performance with that ultra-fast 3.3 second 0 to 60 that we tested recently, there's no additional body change. So it doesn't come across as looking different or looking as special as some of the competition, but we do get that absolutely insane performance. So it really depends on what you're looking for here. Now the Model 3 is going to be a little bit less expensive than a lot of these competitors as well. If you want 4.4 to 4.5 seconds out of your Model 3, the dual motor model will get you there for 47,990. That's a notable discount over the C43. Again, not gonna feel quite as special. It's not gonna have the handling ability, that sort of thing that we see in the C43, but it is going to be a little bit less expensive. Tesla's recent price drop on the performance trim really makes for an interesting twist in this segment because for the price of the C43 or the price of the M340i, you could get a vehicle that goes zero to 60 more like a C63 or BMW M3. 3.3 seconds zero to 60 is very, very, very fast. It's fast enough to mean that even though the Model 3 may not handle quite as well as the M3 or the C63 in some situations, it's probably going to be faster around some tracks. We've recently seen some evidence of that where some of the publications out there have taken a Model 3 performance and a new M3, and they've got the Tesla around the track a little bit faster than the M3. Some of this will really depend on the track, however. So if the track is very, very windy, then this may change a little bit, but the Model 3's ability to apply so much power instantly really helps it in terms of exiting the corners. There's no waiting for the vehicle to downshift like you do in something like a Model 3. So even if you're really good on the transmission, the Model 3 may have advantages there. Key things to know about the Model 3, the tax credit is sunsetting. It's gonna be gone by the end of this calendar year. So then we won't get the same sort of benefits that we find in some of the alternatives out there. It does have access to the carpool lane in California that could be a big benefit to some folks out there. It's not gonna feel quite as special, however. The interior, again, does not change. We have a lot fewer ways to configure the interior, the exterior, etc. very few options available in that Tesla relative to the average luxury entry here. Purchasing it may be a little bit tricky in some states out there. Not all states allow direct sales, all of the Tesla process, so that does get a little bit tricky. And overall, build quality is not going to be as good as the Mercedes or the BMW. Panel fitments, panel gaps, uh, quality of paint, etc. is not going to be at the same level as the rest of the luxury competition. But the Model 3 is really an interesting option in this segment. And that's why I have to say that as much as I liked the C43, and as much as I like the C43 more than the S4 or the M340i or the Volvo S60 T8, if I were personally shopping in this segment right now, I think it would be a pretty close tie between the C43 and something like the Tesla Model 3. The Model 3 has those issues that I mentioned earlier, but in California, it's pretty available and it's pretty easy to service. So if my own money were on the line, I suspect I might get the Model 3 performance. Let me know what you think about that bombshell down there in the comment section below, and what would you pick if you were shopping in this segment? I think the C43 would top my list if I didn't have easy access to charging infrastructure, if I didn't want to charge, that sort of thing. And then of course there's the exhaust note, which is absolutely incredible, definitely worth every penny in terms of the exhaust note. But again, I think in my particular situation, I might be tempted to get the Model 3. Again, let me know what you think about that down there in the comment section below. Find us over at facebook.com slash alexnautas if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you next week.